Am I the idiot? For threatening my teacher, my math teacher 30s M tried to hit me when I 19 F could could not solve the equation. He is a tall man 6 feet 5 inches with large build 2 and I am a skinny teen girl, his one hit would likely have left me with bruises or inflammation. I stopped his hand and told that he cannot hit me and if he do I will report him and call cops, there are two CCTV cameras working in my college class. He used to hit guys in our class but they never said anything. He said it's teacher's duty to teach discipline and I am using being female to my advantage and threatening him when he did not hit yet, to which I clarified I am not just threatening I will do it if he even tries again. It kind of struck me badly because my own dad never tried to hit me seriously. I don't think I was over the top because I feel it is something to be over the top about. Am I the idiot? For touching my friend's neck, my friend and I, as well as our school, went to a bowling alley as a field trip. At first, everything was going well until my friend pushed my other friend of the seating, which I assumed she did jokingly because everyone was laughing. I, deciding I would pretend to be mad, went up to her with the intent to pretend I was mad that she pushed my friend. I raised my hands and slowly went for her throat, with the intention that I would stop far enough away where she and everyone around us would know it was just for fun. She stopped my hands of course, so I decided I would push just a bit harder to pretend I was actually mad, to which she then said to get the duck off of her. I, of course, immediately got off because I didn't know I was making her uncomfortable. I thought that was the end of it, and I helped my friend up and continued bowling. A chaperone called me over a few minutes later and I saw my friend walking away from them. They told me how putting my hands on someone's neck, jokingly or not, was not allowed. I hadn't even touched her, and if she let me continue, I wouldn't even have then. I thought that was the end of it until a year later. I guess she told someone about it because they texted it in a group chat I was a part of. They didn't say my name, however, but it was still pretty scary. That same day, I got two no-caller ID calls, talking about the event. I immediately knew it was my friend from her voice, and when I threatened to call the cops, because I was pretending I didn't know who it was, she admitted it was her and that she was just joking. I don't know if I really am in the wrong, but she is really starting to manipulate me into believing I am. So, am I the idiot? Or was this grudge taken too far? Am I the idiot? For treating my parents the way they've been treating me, growing up sucked. My childhood was half in foster care. My parents did drugs. My grandma threatened them in order to make them get us out of the system. Mind you. My birth mom and bio dad were never married. When I went into the system with three of my siblings they split. My dad married this lady and my mom got with her three hubby then. This lady been married nine times she nuts but I grew up with the whole respect your elders no matter what so when I became an adult I did whatever they told me. I paid their bills, gave them money. You name it. Here we are 10 years of me being on my own and just going on 3 years of learning to tell them no. But I get told I'm the wrong one for not doing what I'm told. PSSSHHHTTTT karma is coming back around to them and she's hitting hard. Am I the idiot? For using a dark skin tone emoji with friends? Indian here, IF20S, Indian was texting with some friends mix of races and used the emoji with the darkest skin tone, thumbs up. I use it because it reflects well my actual skin tone. Later, one of my friends African American messaged me privately saying it made them uncomfortable because, according to them, only black people should use those emojis. I explained that I have dark skin myself think South Indian but they said it wasn't the same and it felt like I was trying to be black. Honestly, I wasn't trying to be anything other than myself. But I also don't want to offend anyone. So, am I the idiot? For using that emoji? Here's what I think I wasn't trying to be disrespectful or mock anyone. These emojis are meant for everyone, regardless of race. But I also see my friend's point blackface is a serious issue and I don't want to downplay that. Maybe there's a cultural difference I'm not understanding. So Reddit, what do you think? Am I the idiot? For warning my sister's boyfriend she wanted our parents to confront him at dinner, my 23F family went out for dinner a few days ago to celebrate my sister 26F Jen's birthday. When we got to the restaurant Jen was already there alone. She said she told her boyfriend Blake the time got pushed back 30 minutes because she needed to talk to us alone. Jen was mad at Blake for not getting her any birthday gifts and only took her out to dinner to a place they go to often. Our parents understood her being upset and she asked if they would try talking to him because she couldn't get Blake to understand how hurtful that was. I asked her if she had given him her usual present for his birthday or last holiday and Jen said that wasn't important. For context, my sister's idea of a gift for her partner is lingerie and intercourse, and only ever that. I don't know about her past relationships but I do know in the two years they've been together, I've heard and seen Blake give her gift ideas for him and he winds up buying them for himself after the fact. He's come to Christmas at our house with gifts for Jen and Jen always shows up empty-handed for him saying she'd give him his present later. I told Jen it sounded like she got as good as she gives whereas our parents said I should be concerned someone would be dismissive and vindictive toward my sister. Our parents said they'd think about talking to him based on his behavior when he arrived. So I text Blake that Jen was setting him up for a lecture. He wound up not showing up. Last night Jen called me angry. She saw my text to him and realized my text was the reason he cancelled and accused me of not having her back and she's told our parents I butt into their relationship but I figure she was trying to get us involved in her relationship anyway. I probably could have just stayed quiet but at the time it didn't sit right with me what she was trying to do. Am I the idiot? Mini update, thank you everyone for the responses. I wouldn't say my sister is the golden child since we were treated equally growing up, more that our parents are family first no matter what. This is not the first time she's tried getting others to fight her battles, just the first time she's done it in public and with our parents. 
I do not know if our parents know her gift giving but it's pretty easy to figure out based on her comments being the same with every boyfriend she's had since high school. And no, I do not have feelings for Blake, I have a boyfriend of my own I love very much. They are broken up and as some of you guessed, Jan is blaming me but honestly I wasn't expecting to come through unscathed after I warned him. I got the news from our mother who called earlier to hark on me not backing my sister up against a man who disregarded her wishes on an important day and bailed. I told mom there are times you absolutely do have families back but when your daughter only ever forwards nature's gift card to her partners on gift giving occasions knowing they've asked for something else and then involves the entire family for getting her process turned around on her isn't it? Instead of agreeing to a public intervention, she should have told Jen to leave us out of it and keep it between them. Maybe shut down Jen's all men need his intercourse to be happy rhetoric years ago and maybe she'd have a son-in-law by now. So that's all that. Thanks again, I think I'm going to go buy some just for the hell of it gifts for my own boyfriend. Am I the idiot? For wearing white to a baby shower? I 29F have been friends Claire 28F since high school. We have a small group of friends that has stayed close since then. Claire is pregnant and had her baby shower yesterday. I wore a white and blue floral sundress. I didn't think anything of it because, as far as I know, white is only inappropriate for bridal events. When I arrived at the shower, Claire's mood seemed to immediately sour and she was really cold toward me. Later, one of my other friends pulled me aside and asked me to leave. She said that Claire was offended by my attention-seeking behavior and that it was inappropriate to wear white to Claire's event. I left. I'm super confused. Like I said, I thought the white rule only applied to bridal events. Our friends are refusing to take sides but a couple have told me I should apologize even if I don't think I'm wrong. Am I the idiot? Am I the idiot? For working for a friend's competitor, I do freelance marketing content and have a good friend who started a brand last year in a niche market. Recently, I've had some major life changes and basically am responsible now for about $1,000 more per month in bills out of the blue. I was offered a short contract to create some content for a much larger competitor brand in my friend's niche. The pay is enough for my rent for a month which is huge for me. I told my friend up front about being offered this contract as I wanted to ensure I was clear and didn't want their feelings hurt. They are very upset with me even though they are aware of the changes in my life causing me to need these funds. I support their brand with my own money, buy their products and never ask for free stuff. I promote their brand for free without being asked just because they are a good friend to me. Am I the idiot? Am I the idiot? I don't understand why people say that if grown-ups were to actually play then kids wouldn't stand a chance. Why do some people say that if grown-ups were to actually play with kids, the kids wouldn't stand a single chance? If the kids are playing, then they do stand a chance, right? What is challenging for your child in a rock climbing race on the playground with you if they know that you are going to let them win, and that you are not even going to try to climb or you are going to pretend and climb incredibly slow? Where is the challenge when playing monkey in the middle with your parents if you know that they are just going to give you the ball, if them as the thrower, are just going to deliberately drops fumble the ball, or that when they are the monkey, they are just going to pretend to try and get the ball but then act like they weren't able to, and just let you win? What is challenging or fun in wrestling if the opponent in wrestling is just going to let them win and not even try, or just pretend during the whole thing? I mean, if two parents or you and a friend were to play a game they would actually play, but then as soon as a kid is playing with them they deliberately let them win with seemingly no effort, they do not even let the child earn a win or even let them show the adult what skill they have. The child could be in preschool, kindergarten, or they could even be a first, second, or third grader. The child could even be a next-door neighbor who you have just met regardless, the adult assumes that the child has no skill and therefore cannot play with them. For that child who was playing, where was the challenge? What exactly would happen if the adults were to actually play an example that I gave instead of just pretending and quite literally just giving the kid the win even though the kid is putting no effort into it? What would happen if the parents actually played monkey in the middle, actually played with their child on the kitty rock wall race, actually played during the relay race, etc. Am I the idiot? I hate when my brother uses my Xbox. I am 17, I have a PS5 and Xbox Series S. I really don't mind with my siblings borrowing my consoles just as long as they bring back to my room after. With my brother though he acts like it's his Xbox. Whenever he would borrow my PS5 he would bring it back right after he's finished playing. But when it's the Xbox that he wants to play with it, he wouldn't bring it back until I say I'ma play it. Then when I finally play the Xbox. The next 5 hours he asks if he can play it again not even giving me time. I shouldn't even be asking him that I want to play my Xbox most of the time he wouldn't even play it, he just asks for it just for it to stay in his room. This gets me mad because I'm all waiting for weeks feeling bad thinking as long as he can play but no he doesn't even play it. Just today I asked for it back to play it, I barely got on because I was tired. 4 hours goes by and he asks for it again. Then while he's getting the Xbox he tells me are you going to get the new Dead Rising on your PS5? He already bought it on the Xbox already. He's most likely saying this is so he can just hog the Xbox even more. He forces me saying I should I buy Dead Rising and just play online games with my friends on the PS5 when I play with them on the Xbox. I'll tell him I don't have PS Plus but he offers to pay for it, but that's not the point. The point is my Xbox has all the good games for online and I don't want to rebuy them on my PS5. I really don't know what to do from this point forward. Any ideas what I should I do? Should I get over it? Am I the idiot? If I don't want to in contact with my dad or half-sisters after 12 years, backstory my mom always told me I was an accident by a blessing because at the time she needed me. My grandma passed months before this occurred and my mom was at a young age. At the time she trusted my dad and during dating she ended up pregnant. How she got pregnant you may ask. 
This sneaky MF poked a hole in the condom. How did my mom find out? Because he told a friend that he was going to get my mom pregnant. Of course she broke it off with him but said he could see me. Wanna know the reason why he never really saw me? Since they couldn't be together he didn't want me lol. Fast forward to when I first met him. I was 7 years old. My mom tried to give it a try don't know the backstory but he saw me about 3 times total. One time against my mom's will he pick me up from school. I remembered he took me to a store and left the door open and told a person in another car he knew to watch me. You can imagine how me and my mom felt after he left again. Turns out he was just trying to get back with my mom. Fast forward 12 years currently 19 my half sister asked me if I was his child. I replied yes and then she put me in a group chat with two other people. Turns out he abandoned four girls in total. He was in contact with one and she was the youngest. Turns out he moved and is playing stepdad with another woman. Which I knew because when I got into my teens I googled his Facebook. He bragged about my grades or my art being in the newspaper. In total I saw me on his page about three times but that was all from when he saw me at seven. At the time it had hurt and I cried but realized I got a stepdad that was with me for way longer. I always knew I had other siblings due to the Facebook and when they added me in the group chat I just felt no connection. I'm the oldest of the females but I just didn't want to continue talking to them. To be fair I don't really like talking to anyone unless they my close see family brother, sister, mom in the group chat the youngest one was saying that he is in the hospital and that I should reach out. I declined because I don't have no love or liking to him anymore. Afterwards I stopped responding but in reality I felt like I had no connection to my sisters and they had their own so why would they need me? Plus when I was discussing this with my mom my little sister in her early teens seemed sad so my mom had to act like it's a joke. I built such a connection with my sister and we seen and been through so much. I just feel like my energy should go on her. I love the bond I have with her and I'm not looking to replace her. I don't even have a best friend because I consider my sister my best friend and frankly I don't have an ounce of love for the other three sisters. Does that make me an asshole? Am I the idiot? My friend stole my crush and rats me out to my dad. Amir is my only friend, he's very good with people and sort of the opposite of me really, he's a big extrovert. He's always helped me especially in situations where I've struggled to speak up or stand up for myself. We've been friends since we were little and his friendship means a lot to me. But in the last year or so I've been feeling like he's betraying me. Amir gets along with people easily, and he and my dad are very good friends too. Problem is my dad has very strict ideologies and Amir has taken to agreeing with him, and has started acting like my dad's arm of the law. My dad is strict about women, and worries they are a deadly distraction for my studies. He says no girls, no girlfriends, no wasting time ogling girls. So a while ago, by some miracle I start talking to a girl who I've had a silent crush on, she says she's seen me around and I look interesting so she needed to get to know me. She asks me out then Amir appears and says in front of her you know your dad has for forbidden girls, don't betray your dad like this I try to hush him but he continues on and on, and explains to her I cannot date her or hang out with her. She becomes visibly awkward uncomfortable, she says sorry and leaves. Two weeks later and I find out Amir has started dating her, and that she's been staying the night at his house on top of this, for my recent birthday my dad said he would relax the internet restrictions and allow images. I can see pictures and videos for about 12 hours before I see Amir, and tell him in excitement that I can do stuff like use Google images and see and funny videos now. He walks home with me, and tells my dad I've been using it to look at women in bikinis. I'll admit this was something I was building up to doing but I didn't say that to Amir, and he ratted me out before I could. My dad takes it away as soon as Amir tells him and now I'm back to a text-based experience. I got angry at Amir and said he's a traitor. He responds by saying that he is looking out for my best interest. He says I'm being immoral by trying to ignore my father's wishes. That I disrespect my father. He has made me doubt myself, I wonder am I being self-absorbed about what I want, going against people who want the best for me. I'm unsure. Am I the asshole? Am I the idiot? My husband expects me to help his parents whenever they need me to and I said no more. I have been married to my husband for 10 plus years and his parents have always been a constant issue in our marriage. A few years ago they decided to move to another state to be midway between my husband and his sister. My husband has two siblings each in different states. When his parents would come visit us unexpectedly I'm talking no heads up telling us when they were already driving and about 5 hours away from our place. They would tell us they were coming and planning to stay with us for 3-4 days. I always found this extremely annoying. I wouldn't mind if they would at minimum give us a couple days in advance so I could clean the house I have kids the house gets dirty and get their room ready. I would tell my husband he needed to tell them they have to let us know in advance or get a hotel room we are not a holiday in. My husband always thought this was ridiculous of me and would insist it was not a big deal. He has never told them I found this to be an issue and of course he didn't I'm the one that had to clean the entire house, get the bedsheets washed, run to the store and get extra food to plan lunches and dinners. He would always be working so he would only have to deal with them one full day out of the 3-4 days they would be here. For context my in-laws are extremely religious, I was raised Catholic but have stopped attending church. My in-laws were Catholic but have converted to Christianity 10 years ago to me it's almost the same thing but to them it's completely different. I have questioned my faith several times and refused to bring my children up in something I don't, 100, believe in. For context I believe in God and my children believe in God I just don't believe you have to go church to be saved and go to heaven. It's always so uncomfortable for me to be around his parents. One thing I have never liked is they would make us pray before we had our meals and put us on the spot saying okay you pray today, our children always found this uncomfortable and I would tell them it's just something we have to deal with when they come over. 
Another thing is they always talk about how we need to take our kids to church and how we need to raise them to read the Bible. I was raised to respect someone's home you don't go to someone's house, take over and tell them how to live their lives and raise their children. I've had to sit down and listen to them ramble on and on about their beliefs, how Catholics are doing it wrong so on and so on. To me I believe to each their own if someone wants to pray to a unicorn and it makes them happy let them be, I would never force my beliefs and opinions onto anyone. BTW I'm not saying God is a unicorn I'm just simply saying you do you boo, who am I to judge they have always asked me for help filling out paperwork, online paperwork, updating their phones, anything tech related you name it I have had to help since day one of us getting married, they sold their home and decided to move closer to us I'm talking less than an hour drive. Here is where I have had enough. Now they have been calling me once a week for help and I have finally put my foot down and told my husband no more I told him they are his parents he needs to deal with them and to stop throwing them at me to help them. He says he's busy with work and doesn't have the time he does have a stressful job I have my own job too while I'm also the one taking care of our children and all of the housework. We have been arguing more and more to the point of me telling him either you tell them enough is enough they need to figure shit out on their own or I'm going to but it will not be in the nicest way. His parents are in their early 60s they are not dinosaurs they can figure things out on their own. I finally started to put up boundaries, his mom sent me a text and asked me if I was available that afternoon to help them pay a bill online. I of course said yes I would help them, however I told her I am available x day and his mom called me saying I know you're busy but can't you help us right now? I told her again sorry this is the day I am available but I did send her instructions how to pay it herself online. Now three days later they asked me to print out paperwork for them and if I was available. I was not and told them I would be available the following day, well they called my husband while he was at work telling him it was something quick they needed the paperwork printed ASAP. Well needless to say my husband got mad at me when he got home saying well why couldn't you help them? And how it was an inconvenience of him to help them while he was at work and how I had a few minutes to help them out. Like seriously? I told him enough is enough I can help but I'm not a ducking personal assistant he has told me he will divorce me if I make him choose between his parents or me. I'm not making him choose, what I am saying is they are not my problem I am not responsible for them it's his and his siblings responsibility to help them. Am I the a-hole? Am I the idiot? My stepdog there's mother wants me to put her child first above my own and to push my kids away when we have her. For context I 30f have two children one from a previous marriage and one with my current partner my partner has one child from a hookup situation. Which is my stepdaughter. Currently there is no custody agreement between them and we have my stepdaughter every second weekend and half of holidays. This weekend her mother asked if we wanted her and we had said no due to commitments we have in place and my stepdog there's behavior is totally out of line right now and has been for four years now due to her mother uprooting her life multiple times in the past four years along with allowing dangerous people around her and drugs. We unfortunately are going somewhere that my stepdaughter isn't allowed to go due to her extreme behavior and total disrespect for anyone around her and when I explained that to her mother she absolutely flipped her crap at me and accused me of pushing her away which I have never done also stating that I don't put her daughter first like I should. Well fully knowing I have my own children to take care of as well. My stepdaughter has become a major safety issue with the other children in our home. I absolutely love my stepdaughter but I can't keep putting my children in a situation that's dangerous also she is incredibly destructive she breaks everything she can when she doesn't get her own way she throws major fits just to get back to her mother hurts my youngest child just to get attention and when we bring this all up to her mother she blames us for her behavior and tries to state her daughter would never do that. So am I the idiot? For telling her mother until she can get her behavior under control and understand I'm not going to put her daughter first above any other child like she wants me that she can't be slandering us and threatening us also we would be having her the first week of these holidays which starts on Monday so technically we wouldn't get her till Monday. Am I the idiot? Removed my child from a school and other parents followed. Ta account. English not main lang. I have two kids in public schools those are the best in my country, the oldest, Jane, is seven. This school year a kid joined the class and the parents were all called in. They said it a special ed child, which no one minded. This is an inclusive school and the kids already have a diverse class, including special ed kids, children in the spectrum, among others. It has been like this since pre-K. However, one month after school started Jane was sleeping worse, she would jump with every noise, hated going to school. I tried to understand what was going on, and I was shocked. The teacher confirmed and looked like she was at a breaking point herself. The child, let's call her Lainey, is a teenager. She has constant meltdowns, screams and hits everyone. Her mother refuses for her to wear a diaper, and she just says lacy poop or lacy pee immediately does odd in front of everyone. She has a helper with her at all times, but when this happens the teacher also leaves to room to help change her. I have no idea why this child is not in a more suitable environment. I took Jane to the doctor, and he said she should be removed from this environment as she was getting traumatized. I asked for my child to change classes and after a while the school obliged. But then also did the other parents. It was a mess. I ended removing my Jane and placing her in a private school, two others friends also did that. Last week I went to school to learn what the plans for Lacey were and since she will be moving along with the other kids to next year class I will not re-enroll Jane and warn that I would be removing my youngest and place both in a close by public school for this school year. A lot of parents did that, which will likely lead to the 8 year class next year to have just a handful of students in Lacey. The parents of the children who stayed for next year are pissed because Lacey is getting bigger and hard to handle, and they fear she could hurt the kids. They are gathering signatures to create a special ed focus class.
That is not how it works in that school. By doing that they will just remove all children with a personalized education program from the class where they are succeeding I didn't sign. This is causing a bad environment with several parents in the neighborhood. Yesterday I was at the grocery and the mother of a boy wore autism inserted in a regular class was speaking to me about this, that she might remove him as well if this special class for special kids goes forward. Other parents heard what we were talking about and everyone is arguing. One of them said up my fault things were so bad, because I should have tried other solution before removing my child from that school. I feel bad for Lacey, it is not her fault. But she needs a specific assistance program. I should also add her mother refuses anything that is not integration on a regular class and being a public school their hands are tied. Am I the idiot? Lacey is 15 BTW.